so welcome back to today's class previous classes we discussed regarding depressive disorders and anxiety disorders in pregnancy so today we'll be dealing with eating disorders so pregnancy can be a stressful and anxious time for some women especially those with an eating disorder the accompanying weight gain and change in body shape can lead to recurrence or worsening of eating disorders so in eating disorders because of the body changes there will be chance of getting the eating disorders also for the pregnant woman so the types of eating disorders are anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa anorexia nervosa means loss of appetite the woman is not having appetite and in bulimia nervosa binge eating means she is continuously keep on eating then pica pica means it is excessive craving of the non edible items like clay or mud something so the symptoms seen in high risk women who should be screened for eating disorders are she may have low body mass index that is because she may have anorexia and she is not at all taking food so her body will be weak and there will be low body mass index concerned about weight but not overweight menstrual disturbances or amenorrhea gastrointestinal symptoms physical signs of starvation or repeated vomiting so the symptoms seen in high risk women who should be screened for eating disorders are low body mass index concerned about weight but not overweight menstrual disturbances or amenorrhea gastrointestinal symptoms physical signs of starvation or repeated vomiting so what management we can do for eating disorders treat the eating disorder before pregnancy so during the antenatal visit that is in first trimester or first visit if we are finding out that some of the symptoms as i told earlier if the woman is having so we have to treat the eating disorders and if the person is coming with the preconceptional counseling that time also if we find out some of the problems we can treat then and there itself the nutritional advice before pregnancy then educate a woman about nutrition and growth of the fetus so we have to advise a mother that if she is properly taking nutritious balanced diet then only the growth of the fetus will be proper so that also we have to give enough advice for the mother refer the woman to an eating disorder service as early in pregnancy as possible if she has an active eating disorder so as i told if you are finding or detecting the symptoms as early we have to refer the woman to a eating disorder service as early to correct these symptoms then joint obstetric care is needed if the woman has active anorexia nervosa or there are concerned that she is vulnerable lies with the health visitor to monitor the studies have suggested that the severity of symptoms may actually decrease during pregnancy so the studies find that we are referring the woman early then and there itself means there is a chance of developing the disease and subsiding the disease during the pregnancy time and oxy nervosa reduces a woman's fertility and women with bulimia nervosa are more prone to unplanned pregnancies consider psychological treatment rather than the antidepressants and advise against breastfeeding if on fluoxetine so the eating disorders if the mother is on fluoxetine during the puerperal period we have to advise regarding the breastfeeding so next we will be dealing with psychosis so psychosis is a mental health problem that causes people to perceive or interpret things differently from those around them this might involve hallucinations or delusions so psychosis is a mental health problem that causes people to perceive or interpret things differently from those around them this might involve hallucinations or delusions however for women with a history of psychosis particularly psychosis in previous pregnancies the relapse rates are high with the most common manifestations being bipolar disorders and psychotic depressions and schizophrenia so the types of psychotic disorders are bipolar mood disorder and schizophrenia what do you mean by bipolar mood disorder it is a psychiatric disorder for a mood disorder usually of alternating episodes of mania and depression risk of relapse is same in pregnancy as at any other time abrupt stoppage of treatment in unplanned pregnancy increases the risk
In pregnant women who are stable on antipsychotics should be maintained on antipsychotics with the monitoring of weight gain and diabetes. If stopped, lithium as a prophylactic treatment, consider antipsychotics. If new episode wide on medications, consider increase of dose or change to another antipsychotics. Next, we will move on to schizophrenia. It is a mental disorder characterized by a breakdown of thoughts process and by a deficit of typical emotional responses. It is called schizophrenia. So, schizophrenia is a mental disorder characterized by a breakdown of thought process and a deficit of typical emotional response. Common symptoms include auditory hallucinations, paranoid or bizarre delusion or disorganized speech and thinking and it is accompanied by significant social or occupational dysfunctions. Prevalence of about 0.3 to 0.7 percentage in general population. Psychosis during pregnancy can have devastating consequences for both the mother and her fetus, including failure to obtain proper prenatal care, negative pregnancy outcomes such as low birth weight and prematurity, and neonaticide or suicides. Women with a history of psychosis requires close monitoring by healthcare professionals during pregnancy. Women with schizophrenia who are planning a pregnancy or pregnant should be treated according to guidelines except switch from atypical to typical antipsychotics should be considered. Women with schizophrenia who are breastfeeding should be treated according to guidelines except that women receiving depot medications and should be advised that their infants may show extrapyramidal symptoms. Signs and symptoms. Hallucination. As I told, there is hearing voices, seeing things which other people do not see. Then some of the delusions like being followed by secret agents or members of the public that people are out to get you or trying to kill you like that feeling. Then uh, cognitive experiences like concentration problem, memory problem, unable to understand new information, difficulty to making decisions. What management we can give? So mainly non-pharmacological that is cognitive behavior therapies, family interventions, art therapy, pharmacological medications like antidepressants. Most tricyclics have a higher fatal toxicity index than selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Then fluoxetine is the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor with the lowest non-risk during pregnancy. Then imipramine not triptyline, sertralines are present in breast milk at relatively low levels, unlike fluoxetine. Then selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors after 20 weeks gestation may be associated with an increased risk of persistent pulmonary hypertension in the neonate. Paroxetine taken in the first trimester may be associated with fetal heart rate defects. All antidepressants carry the risk of withdrawal or toxicity in neonates. In most cases, the effects are self-limiting. Then benzodiazepines it should not be routinely prescribed for pregnancy. Except for short-term treatment of extreme anxiety and agitation, risk to fetus, cleft palate, risk to neonate, then floppy baby syndrome, then valproate, that is risk of neural tube defects, if possible, Convert to another drug so that is bipolar disorder converted to antipsychotics. If no alternative limited to maximum 1 gram per day in divided doses in slow release format. Then administer 5 mg per day folic acid. And also antipsychotics also can be given that is clozapine should not be routinely prescribed for women who are pregnant. So theoretical risk of fetal agranulocytosis in the infant then olanzapine, that is risk factors for gestational diabetes should be taken into account. Depot antipsychotics and anticholinergic drugs should not be routinely prescribed to pregnant women because may show extra pyramidal side effects and several months after the administration. Then uh, carbamazepine and lamotrigine. Carbamazepine increased risk of neural tube defects. 60, 6 to 20 per thousand also risk of gastrointestinal tract problems and cardiac abnormalities. Lamotrigine carries risk of oral cleft nine per thousand exposed to fetuses. Stop if possible. Then lithium increases the fetal heart abnormality eight per thousand increased to sixty per thousand. Avoid in first trimester and during breastfeeding. Stop if not at high risk of relapse. Gradual withdrawal over four weeks. 
consider converting to antipsychotics consider stopping for first then restarting in second trimester if not planning to breastfeed if continuing check levels every 4 weeks then weekly from 36 weeks and within 24 hours of childbirth adjust adjust dose to keep at the lower end of the therapeutic range monitor fluid balance in labor risk of dehydration and lithium toxicity may be necessary to check lithium levels that is regarding the disorders so hope you understood please subscribe the channel in next video we will be discussing regarding the psychotic disorders in puerperal period please share to your friends also thank you